I spent 100 days building a zoo in Minecraft again. Yeah, I think I must like animals a tiny bit. So basically, I added loads of new animals to Minecraft like elephants, lions, bears, and a ton of other land and marine animals. So yeah, we're going to spend the next 100 days exploring the world and building an awesome new home for the animals. On day one, oh wait, I just realized that the first Minecraft day is actually day zero. So yeah, on day zero, I spawned in a brand new world and I actually met this super friendly pigeon, so we became buddies for a bit. I then went along and punched down a tree to make myself a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. Sadly, I had to say goodbye to the pigeon because there were probably a bunch of animals that wanted to kill me out there, like for example these random spiders, and I couldn't walk around with seeds in my hand forever. There were a lot of really cool animals around like elephants, snakes, peacocks, and then I came across this wild boar and trust me, I was not expecting the very first day to go down like that. Obviously, I didn't have any food on me, so I waited for the mother and her kid to walk off and I went to punch a poor chicken to get some food. I actually got instant karma because a wild boar fell on top of me from nowhere, but thankfully I had time to quickly hide in a hole in the ground. Great. On top of that, the night fell super quickly, so I carefully went out to get a log so that I could actually light up my hole in the ground. Of course, the chicken barely fed me and I couldn't eat some spiders I'd gotten earlier on, so yeah, all I could do was get a bit of iron. On day one, yes, it feels a bit weird to say day one for the second day, I went outside to get some food and had to avoid this creeper because I only had two hearts and I'm in hardcore, so yeah, not the best. I also decided to chop down some extra wood and had to avoid the creeper yet again. I used the iron I'd found to make a shield, so yeah, I think I was a little bit more protected than when I had seeds in my hand the entire time. I came across these cute little ferrets and then I also spotted a badger that was digging up the ground like crazy. Once I had a little bit more food, I decided to go mining because to actually build the zoo more easily, I would need to have a full set of enchanted diamond tools. And in hardcore, diamond armor is also very welcome. On day two, I came back up to the surface to smell the ores and I crafted an iron pickaxe. I then proceeded to transform my dirt hole into a dirt hut. So yeah, I guess the transformation wasn't too incredible. But anyway, in this world, I will be focusing more on animal homes rather than my own. So we'll be living hobbit style. I got some extra wood and realized there were some plants that poison you if you walk over them, which is lovely. And later on, I spotted some giraffes in the distance, but on my way to see them, a scorpion got angry at me and I got poisoned once again. But of course, that didn't stop me from going to say hello to the giraffes. That night, I got back to the safety of my dirt hut and I finally started strip mining for diamonds. I was lucky enough to find my very first diamond vein and I collected them for crafting a pickaxe and later on an enchanting table. On day three, I crafted a bucket to start collecting some obsidian because my plan was to go in the nether pretty soon so that I could get an elytra for building the zoo. On day four, I made the acquaintance of some very friendly bisons and I also killed a bunch of goats, which was um, a bit less nice. But once again, I got instant karma because this leech just jumped at me out of nowhere. I spotted a savannah village in the distance, so I made my way over and started started collecting some melons and hay bales and I was delighted to find eight bookshelves in one of the houses which would help me start enchanting much sooner. After that I got a really funny encounter. Basically I saw this anteater and came to say hi and he just started giving me hugs which was really funny. Oh and also a random hippo came by. I was glad I met him on land because apparently in water they are pretty aggressive. At that point, I think I accidentally came across a top secret turtles reunion. So yeah, I gave them a bit of space. I looted the village chests and killed the iron golem for extra iron. 
And that's when I spotted a lion. And trust me, at that point, I was very careful not to go too close. On day five, I headed back to my amazing hut and decided to start collecting some wood. A wild boar came around, but this time I had more than just seeds to defend myself. So in a way, I kind of got my revenge. Later on, I went to collect some lavender for decorating and this wild boar started attacking me, but like I was in between two bisons, so I couldn't actually hit it because if I hit the bison by accident, I think I would not get over it. I placed the lavender I got around my house. Well done, Tootsie. The house looks really 10 times more beautiful with flowers. Not really. <laughs> and after crafting myself a bit of iron armor, I went back down strip mining. I managed to find some more diamonds, but I didn't mine them because I wanted to get Fortune 3 first. I suddenly heard some chicken noises nearby, so I was really confused and I searched around until I found this random chicken in a cave and I named him Joe. On day six, I brought Joe back up to the surface and made him a little enclosure just outside the dirt hut. I agree, it wasn't very big, but Joe didn't seem to mind too much. Oh yeah, and this creeper decided to show up out of nowhere, but thankfully Joe and the dirt hut remained unharmed, although the ground didn't. Okay, so here we have an example of why I didn't want to accidentally hit a bison. They are pretty strong against the wild boars. At that point, I was looking around for sugar cane and I spotted this deer, which looked awesome, as well as some birds, some wolves, and even a brown bear. So trust me, I didn't go too close to that one either. That night, I got the great idea of sleeping in the middle of a bison herd because I knew I'd be protected. On day seven, I killed a few of these really annoying wild boars and I had a bit of a look around before heading back home to feed Joe the chicken. I was able to finish crafting the full set of iron armor and I planted the sugar cane I had collected and started setting up the enchanting area. On day eight, I smelted some cobblestone because I was planning on building the very first enclosure. I started by tracing out the outline with cobblestone and then I added some stone blocks for a bit of contrast. By the way, the first animal I will be welcoming to the zoo is gonna be the bison because I think they are so sweet. I went to collect the sugar cane that had grown and I fed Joe once again. So yeah, now I'm thinking I might be overfeeding him a little bit. That night I managed to find a vein of diamonds. So that motivated me to continue mining until day nine. I found some caves which enabled me to gather plenty of resources like iron, redstone, gold, and coal. In the afternoon, I headed back up to the surface to continue working on the zoo. I chose not to use fences because they don't look very good and instead I was going for a more aesthetic stone wall. Once again, that night I went back down in the caves because I wanted to get loads of ores so that I wouldn't miss anything later on. On day 10, the wandering trader spawned, so I was able to get a lead, which would come in handy, you know, for bringing animals over to the zoo. I added a door to the enclosure to make the access easier, and I also crafted some cage traps, which would make it super easy for transporting animals. I went out to get two bisons, and by the way, for the names, I chose Fred and George. So just a quick note, I am well aware that taking animals from the wild and putting them in an enclosure is not the right thing to do in most cases. So except if they are sick or endangered. So this is why Minecraft is the best place to do so because I am not actually harming them. The reason I do these zoo videos is because I love interacting with the animals and building them nice homes. Once I had released the bisons, it was time to work on the decoration. So my plan was to recreate a grassland similar to their natural habitat in America. And just a quick fact, in the late 1800s, there were only a few hundred bisons left in the United States after European settlers reduced their habitat and hunted them to near extinction. So yeah, they've had it pretty rough, a bit like most animals to be fair. So I started collecting some brown grass that was around me 
And obviously I had to get distracted by a chicken, so I decided to bring him over to Joe so that they could be friends. And by the way, I decided to name this little guy Barry. After that, I remembered what I was doing, so I actually spotted some tall grass growing further off, which would look perfect for the bison habitat. And to spend the night, once again, I went down mining. So I just did that almost every night because I knew I had so much to do for the zoo. So, you know, I didn't want to waste too much time. On day 11, I placed down the plants I'd collected and it didn't really look that great. I went to gather up some more sugar cane and crafted some extra bookshelves. I went back out to get some extra grass for the bisons and that's when I spotted a deer that got hurt by the poisonous plants I told you about. So I decided to capture her to be able to heal her in, how are we gonna call it? Tootsie's Rescue Zoo. Because I needed to do some enchanting, I had to sacrifice a few cows for getting leather. And when the evening came, I noticed that the wandering trader had like left his llamas for no reason. So I brought them over to the chickens. So that night's mining expedition was pretty good because I found two diamond veins super close to each other. And trust me, at that point, I was getting pretty excited about getting Fortune 3 because I knew I was going to get so many diamonds with it. On day 12, I welcomed the llamas into the chicken enclosure and I extended the fence a bit so that everyone was a little bit more comfortable. Says the person who takes animals from their natural habitat to put them in a tiny pen. Yes, I know I don't really make sense sometimes, but it comes from a good intention initially. So I went out to get extra plants and I came upon a small group of deer. So I decided to get a mate for the doe I had found the day before. I hadn't realized, but there was actually a lioness right next to us. So obviously, you know, I bravely stood my ground. Nah, just kidding. I just made a run for it. Thankfully, I did manage to capture a deer in the end, and I also got some extra sugar cane and leather. On day 13, I made my way back home and I continued decorating the bison habitat, and slowly it looked a little bit more like a grassland. I was really happy because I finally had enough books to craft the remaining bookshelves, and now it's time to start enchanting. So just a quick tip to anyone that isn't sure how to enchant. Basically my trick is to start by enchanting random tools with the lowest enchantment to basically refresh the table until you get an enchantment that you want. Another good thing is to craft a grindstone because you can get some of the levels back from, you know, all the random tools you enchanted. So at that point I could get fortune three. The only issue was I didn't have any levels left. So I decided I would head over to the nether to mine quartz for levels. Once I entered the nether, I realized I'd spawned in the middle of a fortress, which is super cool in some ways, but not when you wanna go mine quartz. So what I did is basically I mined down to lava level and then I started strip mining because I was in this weird eyeball biome for some reason. And I almost died just running into lava. So yeah, the diamond armor would be welcome as soon as possible. So finally I found a sort of overgrown biome that had quartz, so I set to work to level up. When I made it back to the overworld, it was actually nighttime, so I headed down to the mines. Of course, I made sure to mine every single ore I could find to get loads of extra levels, and I found some extra diamonds. On day 15, I wanted to start building the deer enclosure, so I headed over to a sort of spruce forest I'd found while exploring my world. I also spotted this black bear in the distance, as well as this adorable little salamander. When I arrived back to base, I started working on the outline of the deer habitat using some spruce planks. On day 16, I continued building up the walls and terraforming, but that's when I felt like a diamond shovel would be so much better because the iron one was so slow. I got really motivated to go mining for levels again, and I also found yet another diamond vein. As mining in the overworld was very time consuming and not very efficient, 
I decided to head back to the nether to mine some quartz. As soon as I got 30 levels, I quickly went to enchant my diamond pickaxe with Fortune 3. And now it's time to enjoy the super satisfying diamond mining. On day 18, I had so many diamonds, I was easily able to craft a full diamond armor, as well as upgrade all my tools. I also enchanted a second pickaxe with silk touch, and then I refreshed the table until I got looting three for my sword. And finally, in the afternoon, I went out to continue working on the deer area. Oh, and I actually noticed that the llamas had gone, but I never found them again. So yeah, this will remain a great mystery, no doubt. So I thought it would be cool, you know, to go explore the fortress a bit, to start collecting the essential stuff for the Ender Dragon fight. So I managed to find a saddle in one of the chests, and I also collected some blaze rods and nether warts for making potions. When I came back to the overworld, I barely had the time to do any building because the night fell. So instead, I decided to go monster hunting for getting plenty of levels. I then headed down caving and heard loads of skeleton noises because there was actually a skeleton spawner nearby. I killed off the skeletons that had spawned and I was able to loot the chest I then enchanted my sword with looting three, which would be perfect because I would get way more loot when killing mobs. And I also decided to place down some water so that I could farm the skeletons more easily. On day 21, I managed to get efficiency four on my shovel. And then I went out to start working on the third enclosure, the giraffes. There was actually already a giraffe in the area. So I made a little dirt wall around her and I named her Emma. As I hadn't slept in a while, a bunch of phantoms spawned, which was perfect because I was able to collect phantom membrane for making slow falling potions. On day 22, I was done with the deer walls, so I released the two deers inside. I named them Bonnie and Clyde. And guess what? Bonnie was indeed quite mischievous because she instantly found a way to climb over the wall. So I went to catch her and guess what? She went out again. So yeah, my wall building skills aren't great. I have to admit it. Oh, and guess what? She actually went out a third time. So I was feeling really silly, but then she actually wandered back inside. So yeah, I guess she's not very smart either. The next day, I wanted to check on Fred and George, see if they were okay. And I felt like their enclosure was a bit flat. So I decided to build two small dirt mountains in the center. Oh, and this guy thought it was a good idea to mess with George, but trust me, he learned things the hard way. On day 24, I was able to enchant my boots with protection four. And then I crafted a cauldron so that the bisons could drink water. And I also added a feeder with some hay inside. And of course, I decided to do the exact same thing for the deer because they had to eat and drink as well. As I had gotten a saddle from the fortress, I decided to tame a horse and I named him Jon Snow. <laughs> I guess you know where that comes from. So Jon and I headed over to the Redwood Forest and I actually spotted an Enderman, so I killed it for Ender Pearls. On day 25, I noticed there was this random black bear that was like stuck super high up in a tree. So yeah, I thought it was a bit weird and funny at the same time. I was planning on having some redwood trees in the deer habitat. So I chopped down a few for saplings and for the floor of the enclosure, I collected some bushes and ferns with my shears. 
For some reason, Jon Snow had lost some hearts. I have no clue what he had been up to. But yeah, I gave him a bit of wheat to heal him and we headed back home. So yeah, I guess now it's time to decorate the enclosures. So I placed some bushes and ferns and I also bone mealed a bunch of saplings. So just a quick fact on deer, males are called bucks, females are called does, and the baby deer are called fawns. And actually a fawn has the ability to stand on its own within 10 minutes of being born and walks within seven hours, which to be fair is quite impressive. In the morning, it was time to continue decorating the deer habitat. What I was going for is basically a cozy and mystical forest with plenty of vegetation and like tall trees for the deer to hide from predators, for example. I noticed that a creeper had spawned, so I decided to light up the area with lanterns to prevent any more mobs from spawning and specifically creepers from exploding and harming the deer. To make the vegetation a bit more dense, I decided to bone meal the ferns to make them taller. The spruce wall looked a bit plain, so I decided to add some redwood leaves all around to make it look a bit nicer. And I also used some inside the enclosure to make some bushes, trying my best not to make them in places where Bonnie and Clyde could easily jump out. I also went over to Fred and George's enclosure to add a bit of green and details. So yeah, here are the two enclosures all done but I'm realizing that they look quite silly in the middle of like this huge plains biome. So what we're gonna do to arrange that a bit is we're gonna start making some pathways all around the place. So yeah, this morning we're basically going to make loads of paths in the area between the enclosures. And as my shovel keeps running out of health super easily, I'm going to craft an anvil to be able to repair it. So we're also going to continue terraforming the giraffe area and I actually want to get some brewing done soon, so we're gonna craft a brewing stand as well. Now for the giraffes, just this time I'll be using some fences because I wanted to change things a bit. So basically the enclosure will be one block lower than the path and then the fences will be slightly hidden behind, you know, the dirt blocks. I know it probably won't look too great, but as long as the giraffes don't mind, it's all good. So my plan is to have a lake in the center of the enclosure for the giraffes to drink in. So we're basically going to dig up a hole in the center. So we all know that giraffes are the tallest mammals on earth, but did you know that they spend most of their lives standing up? I mean, they sleep and give birth standing up. So uh, yeah, seems quite fun. By the way, their spots are much like human fingerprints. No two individual giraffes will have exactly the same pattern. Okay, so here I had the extremely intelligent idea of adding a cauldron with water, even though I was making a lake already. So yeah, major Tootsie facepalm moment for sure. That night, I started brewing some slow falling potions and on day 30, I grew a few acacia trees and they immediately made the giraffe enclosure look way better. And now Emma and Beatrice could eat the leaves as well. I then went out in the savanna with Jon Snow to collect these plants that I thought would look nice in the giraffe habitat. I wasn't really looking where I was going and I stumbled upon a lion pride, so yeah, I quickly went off in the other direction. After that, I spotted a rhino by the village, as well as a brown giraffe that I decided to bring back to the zoo, and I named him Patrick. I placed down the plants I got and also bone meal the ground to get plenty of grass everywhere. In the evening, I went by the river to get some water lilies that grew on the surface. The next day, I headed over to the giraffes and realized that the lake didn't look too good, so I dug up all the stone and replaced it with sand, and finally, I bone mealed everywhere and added the water lilies. We're all done with the giraffe enclosure, so it looks really cozy and peaceful, and the three giraffes seem quite comfy in there. Now, guess who I found wandering out of his pen? Mr. Clyde, of course. So I used the lead to getting back into his redwood forest, and then it was Bonnie's turn to jump out during the night. So basically, I had put some leaves way too close to the wall, 
And yeah, they got out. It's my fault all over again. Oh, and my walls were absolutely terrible because I noticed both Fred and George had walked out as well. As if things weren't complicated enough, a creeper blew a big hole in the wall, so as soon as I bought Fred back in the enclosure, he was able to happily stroll back out again. I rebuilt the wall, got Mr. Fred back inside, and then I went to have a look for George, who had actually fallen in the shallow part of a ravine, so I helped him out and brought him back to Fred. I've got to give it to the fences. They may not look as nice, but at least they keep the giraffes in. So yeah, that's much better than my terrible Tootsie walls. So my solution is I'm going to add some extra leaves on top of the wall just to be sure that they're high enough this time. On day 33, I got protection four on my chest plate and then I headed over to the ocean to have a look at all the marine animals. I saw some magnificent orcas. I mean, I couldn't believe I was actually in Minecraft. They are super well designed. And on the shoreline, I found this bald eagle, so I crept up on him to try and catch him, but he wasn't having any of it, and he kept pecking me with his beak, which I thought was really funny. And to be fair, I totally deserved it because I was entering his personal space and trying to capture him. I also caught a ferret, and then I placed the cages in my dirt hut for the moment because I was slowly focusing on doing the Ender Dragon fight to get the mighty Elytra. I repaired my shovel with some of my many diamonds, yeah. I've got to say, it's really nice not to have to worry about diamonds for once. I still needed to get at least 12 ender pearls, so I set out in the night on Jon Snow to find some endermen. On day 34, I managed to make seven ender eyes, and then I sent one in the air to know in which direction the stronghold was, and, of course, the eye had to break. I mean, how lucky can I be? I thought I was Irish for some reason, but clearly not. Oh, and later on that day, I decided to work on the outline of another enclosure, but I still wasn't sure which animal it was for yet. So now we're off to the nether because I want to start collecting loads of blaze rods. I carefully made my way through the fortress until I reached the top. I also fought off a few wither skeletons and blazes on my way. And finally, I found a blaze spawner. So yeah, I guess we're just gonna chill around here and farm some blazes for a bit. I now had more than enough blaze rods, so I went back into the overworld and traced out the outline of yet another future enclosure. During the night, I went over to the lavender fields to hunt for endermen because I had noticed that they spawned like way more over there, so probably because it was a large open area. Day 36 was all about terraforming to create some extra space for the zoo. But yeah, as my shovel didn't have unbreaking, it lost health super quickly and I knew I would have to get mending pretty soon and probably even unbreaking. I made some extra potions, I got an extra ender pearl, and then I farmed some skeletons through the night to be able to get protection four on my leggings. My plan was to get some mending books, so I went over to the Savannah village to try and get some, and an army of zombies clearly had the same idea as me, so yeah, I had to kill all these guys off. I don't know what they were doing here. Once the zombie situation was under control, I started placing and breaking the lectern to refresh the villagers' trade, which was extremely annoying and boring, but I guess I'm starting to get used to it after all this time. When I got mending, I didn't want the villager to lose that specific trade, so I rushed to try and trade with a Fletcher. But of course, no one in this village wanted to take the job. I mean, they're pretty lazy around here. So I went to gather some wood instead. Now, this lion popped out of nowhere and I got so scared, panicked, and yeah, I killed him. I mean, I feel pretty bad, but I just did not want to lose my world halfway through. So yeah, I'll definitely need to do a lion enclosure so that they will forgive me. Yeah, I did not feel good about doing this at all. On day 38, I finally found a villager that accepted to become a Fletcher. So I started trading some sticks for emeralds, which to be fair, feels like a very fair trade, of course. And then I went to buy a bookshelf from the librarian just to be sure he wouldn't refresh his trades. 
I then headed home, I started farming some wood to make loads of sticks. On day 39, I enchanted my bow with infinity and I also got power 4 on it. And I finally had enough emeralds to get a mending book. Before using up all my levels for putting mending on the shovel, I decided to farm some skeletons so that I could get sharpness 4 on a sword. I went back to the village to get some extra wood and then I traded some more with the Fletcher. I managed to get protection 4 on my helmet and finally I could merge the mending book with my shovel to repair it. On day 46 I got an extra ender pearl and then I headed back to the village with Jon Snow only to meet up with a lioness that jumped straight at us. So sadly I had to kill her because she would be too much of a threat while I was trading with the villagers. I managed to get three mending books and then I went to check if all the animals were doing good and yeah, everyone seemed pretty fine, which was nice. Finally, in the evening, I decided to put mending on the rest of my armor and I also quickly brewed some strength potions because it was finally time for the greatest adventure of all, fighting the Ender Dragon. I collected some extra food on the way because of course, as I was too focused on the animals, I forgot to feed myself most of the time. So yeah, that wouldn't be very practical when fighting the dragon. I walked through many lovely biomes. So I spotted this bear in a forest and then I saw a herd of bison in the middle of like a perfect grassland. That night I cooked the meat and then I had to continue my voyage through the ocean. So the stronghold was located underneath these immense mountains, but right before heading down, I went to have a little look around and found a jungle and there were actually some piranhas biting me through the boat. So I decided to set out on foot instead. On day 48, I made friends with this awesome red octopus guy and I really wanted to make him a cool enclosure back at the zoo. So I literally spent an entire day trying to catch him in a trap. So yeah, that's when I realized that marine animals would be extremely difficult to bring back to the zoo. Luckily enough, I managed to get him out of the water, but suddenly he started suffocating, so I panicked, but thankfully I managed to catch him just in time. That night I went down to the stronghold, so I fought off a few mobs, and I also went to loot the chests that were in a library. Once I found the portal, I got attacked by a bunch of silverfish and it was quite a chaotic moment for some reason. So now we're gonna place all the ender eyes in the slots and let's head into the end. I headed over to the towers and started shooting at the crystals. For the highest ones, I simply piled up along the tower and exploded them once I reached the top. And I did the same for the crystals in cages. Now that all the crystals were cleared, all I had to do was shoot arrows at the dragon. Now the difficulty about this battle was the fact that the dragon simply would not let me hit her with my sword. And every single time she would either kick me back or fly away immediately. So yeah, I guess sharpness 4 was completely useless in that case. So yeah, I had to shoot so many arrows and I really regretted not having strength to potions, but with a bit of patience, I I managed to defeat her and collected the levels as well as the egg. On day 46, I went through the gateway to find some end cities. I used some slabs to make my way over to a huge island and this time around, I think I did have the luck of the Irish because the first city I found had a ship with the elytra in it. I started by killing the shulkers at the entrance and then I made my way up and over to the ship. So I collected the loot from the chests, I picked up the elytra and I also went to get the dragon head before flying down to continue exploring the city. I even remembered to craft a shulker box so that I could carry the loot because every single time I go to end cities, I forget to do that. On day 47, I had everything I needed and I headed back to the overworld. So today we're basically going to work on the outline of an extra enclosure for the zoo 
and we can also go chop down some extra spruce for future trading. The next day, I made my way over to the village to trade some very precious sticks for some, you know, very boring emeralds. <laughs> and I was able to buy two more mending books. So basically, I used one for my elytra, and then I enchanted some diamond leggings with Unbreaking 3, and using the levels I got from the dragon, I merged the two leggings together and then added mending. I also continued terraforming and working on the zoo a bit more. So my shovel really needed to get Unbreaking 3 because it was losing health way too fast. So I flew back to the stronghold, hoping I might find an Unbreaking enchanted book. So, you know, I looted the chest from the libraries and I did find a book with Unbreaking 3. The only problem was it also had some other good enchants. So I wasn't really sure if I was going to use it for that or not. I then returned to my house using the end portal and I also farmed some XP. On day 50, I went to get the cage traps that I had placed in my dirt hut and to my great disappointment, they were all empty. So basically the octopus I'd spent an entire day trying to trap had disappeared as well as the eagle and the ferret. So yeah, that was super annoying and I had to go back out to find another animal for the zoo. I decided to head over to the ocean to get an orca. So the octopus had been really difficult, but the orca was literally impossible to catch. Once I accepted the fact I would not get an orca, I decided to go explore my world a bit further. So believe it or not, I forgot I had an elytra on my back. So yeah, I randomly crossed the ocean on a boat. Um, why not at sea? And I arrived in this lovely autumn forest. So like the leaves were all red and orange and I spotted a woolly rhino. So luckily he was super friendly and I easily got him in my trap. So yeah, a few minutes later, Tootsie finally realized she had an elytra. Well done, Tootsie. <laughs> so I found this immense snowy biome that really looked awesome with like a huge mountain in the center. And I met up with some reindeer. So I decided I would bring back two for the zoo. And then while I was walking over to a village, I spotted a snow leopard and I thought it would be so cool to bring it back to the zoo as well. So the next morning, I carefully approached the snow leopard and placed the trap and I literally almost fell because the entire ground collapsed in front of us. But yeah, all was well and I quickly realized she wasn't aggressive at all. So I guess it was because she wasn't hungry. So yeah, I was able to push her into a trap and yeah, not too complicated. I decided to release one of the white reindeers I got because I found a different colored one. So yeah, I got one of the gray ones instead. I also spotted a second woolly rhino and I was thinking it would be cool to get her as a mate for the rhino I'd got the day before. Now for all these animals, I will be needing plenty of snow for their enclosures. So yeah, it's time to collect a bunch. In the afternoon, I spotted some other big cats in the distance, so I went over because I wanted to get a friend for the snow leopard. Thankfully, they weren't aggressive either, so it was perfect, and I got one in a cage really easily. Oh, and by the way, I couldn't figure out what type of big cat they were, so we're gonna pretend like they're snow leopards, even though they're probably something else. And last but not least, I found this awesome polar bear who was just chilling. So yeah, I was a bit scared at first like every other animal. So I carefully came close and I was surprised to see that he was super friendly as well. So yeah, I caught him in a trap because I wanted to bring him back to the zoo as well. Now that all my cage traps were full, I decided to head back home and I also picked up Jon Snow on the way. At that point, I actually took a break and I forgot to start recording again, but thankfully I realized it pretty quickly. And basically what happened is I flew back to the snowy biome to collect loads of gravel because I would be using it for the floor of the snow leopard enclosure. I used my shears to pick up, you know, some of these little dead gray grass pieces because I thought it would add a bit of detail to the floor of the enclosure. And also it grew on the gravel, so that was quite practical. 
There was a pillager outpost nearby, so I thought, why not loot it? And wow, the loot was absolutely incredible. Carrots for Tootsie, wonderful. I decided to make a quick stop in the bright colored forest just to get some maple leaves because they looked really nice and I thought I could use them for making some trees. Oh yeah, on my way back, I was just soaring through the sky peacefully and suddenly I just fell. So thankfully I was over the ocean. Basically my elytra ran out of health. So yeah, I guess I almost lost my world for a really silly reason. Great. This time I purposely sailed across the ocean in a boat because yeah, I couldn't really fly. And as soon as I made it back, I started working on the snow leopard enclosure. First, I replaced the entire dirt floor with gravel. I then added, you know, the little pieces of grass I had collected. And finally, I managed to get unbreaking on a second diamond shovel. And I was able to merge it with my current one, which would be super helpful for all the digging I had to do. To add a bit of detail, I decided to add some snow sheets over the gravel in certain places. I thought it could be nice to add, you know, different levels in the habitat. So I recreated some small mountains out of gravel, stone and snow. And as I was quite satisfied with the first one, I built a second one a bit smaller in front. So yeah, here is the finished results of the little mountains. What would be nice is if we could add, you know, a bit more vegetation and colors. So we're gonna head over and get some spruce logs to be able to build some small maple trees. We're also going to add a bit of grass as well as snow sheets on the sides of the mountains for extra detail. As soon as the enclosure was done, I released the two big cats in their brand new home. So I named the male Billy and the female Luna. So now let's learn a little bit about snow leopards. In addition to camouflaging them, a snow leopard's soft, dense fur keeps it warm in the cold, rocky mountains of Central Asia. Very few humans have seen snow leopards in real life because they are a very secretive species. Another interesting fact about the snow leopard is they have a wide nose that warms the cold air before it enters the lungs. So yeah, I guess that's quite handy when you live in one of the harshest habitats on Earth. On day 58, I started clearing out the area near the snow leopards to start making some pathways. I then decided we would work on the polar bear enclosure next. So for that, I also went to get a second polar bear in the snowy biome so that the first one wouldn't be alone. After a bit more exploration, I found this frozen ocean and when I landed, like this polar bear started running at me super aggressively, so I quickly flew off. But yeah, I did go back because I wanted to collect some ice for building icebergs in the polar bear habitat. While I was getting the ice, I spotted these adorable little penguins. So yes, I will definitely come back to get them later on. Okay, so don't think I'm weird or anything, but I actually went back to see the polar bears just so that he would run after me. I don't know why, but I thought it would be quite funny to do that. Maybe it gives me a little adrenaline kick or something. <laughs> When I arrived back at base, I decided to kill a few creepers because I was running low on fireworks and I needed some extra gunpowder. On day 59, I started working on the polar bear habitat. It would be frozen ocean inspired, so basically I dug up the entire ground and then I started building some icebergs out of packed ice. I then filled up the entire enclosure with water for the polar bears to swim around and hunt fish. As I would be needing a lot of snow for, you know, all the cold animal enclosures, I wanted to build a snowman for getting unlimited snow. The only problem was that he didn't make any snow because we were in a plains biome and I actually just learned this information on the spot. I set out to get some pumpkins in the maple forest and then I set up the snowman in the lavender forest biome and thankfully it worked. So yeah, now we can collect unlimited snow. On day 61, I was able to start placing down some snow over the grass blocks and I also added a few maple trees to give a bit more color to the plain white and blue tones as well as some poppies. 
During the night, I went mining for some stone because I needed to restock on building blocks for the walls. The next day, I finished building the enclosure walls and I added some seagrass in the water before releasing the polar bears and they both seemed quite happy, so that's what counts the most. For the polar bear names, I chose Ash and Charcoal, and yes, I have a terrible sense of humor, I'm really sorry. For food, I made them a little feeder out of trap doors, and then I placed down some salmon I'd got in a nearby river. Polar bears can be found in the frozen wilds of the Arctic, in Canada, Alaska, Greenland, Russia, and Norway. They can measure over 2.5 meters long and weigh about 680 kilograms, making them the largest carnivores on Earth. The biggest threat to polar bears is climate change and basically rising global temperatures means that the sea ice is melting earlier and forming later each year, leaving less time for the polar bears to hunt for food. At that point, I wanted to add a bit of extra vegetation, so I placed some water lilies and also some bushes. And then suddenly, one of the two polar bears started attacking me. And as I was in the water, I really panicked to get out, but thankfully I did. And yeah, that was a really close call and I was not expecting things to happen like that. Well, to be fair, I was in the same enclosure as two polar bears, so yeah, maybe it's not that surprising. But yeah, I admit after that, I carefully worked from outside of the enclosure, so I added a few reeds along the waterline. And yeah, here is the finished polar bear home. Day 64 was an incredible day because I finally released Joe and Barry from their enclosure. Honestly, I was wondering why did I put them in a pen in the first place? <laughs> I mean, there wasn't much point. But yeah, now they were free from literally the most boring enclosure ever. <laughs> so now we're gonna work on an enclosure I've been wanting to do for a while. The elephants. So I made sure to make it a little bit bigger than usual because I didn't want the elephants to be all crammed up in it. And in the center, I was planning on building a long river stretching all the way across. Just a quick fact on elephants. Basically, they throw mud and sand all over themselves to protect their skin from the sun. And actually, pigs do the exact same thing. I'm not sure I will use the same sunscreen on the beach this summer though. Of all land mammals, elephants possess the largest brains and they have the ability to recall distant watering holes, other elephants and even humans, even after many years. On day 65, I went to chop down some acacia trees for getting saplings and then I planted them all around the elephant pen, which immediately made it look way more like a proper habitat, so that was perfect. The next day, I added some sugar cane along the river, and I also shoveled down some of the grass as if some heavy animals had stomped all over it. And finally, I went to get two elephants that had just been chilling nearby the entire time, and I released them in the paddock making sure to keep my distance because they deal a lot of damage if you get too close. So yeah, we're all done with the elephants. On day 67, I started collecting lots of sand in the purpose of building an area for the snakes. I was inspired to do a desert style landscape with palm trees and a bit of dried up vegetation around the place. I started by removing all the dirt and replacing it with sand and then I went to collect these small eucalyptus trees as well as acacia leaves. So for doing the palm trees, we're gonna start with the trunks. So I'll be using some full acacia logs so that the orange part wouldn't be sticking out. All we have to do is build up, making the tree trunk a bit slanted. And then at the top, I'll be using some acacia leaves to make the shape of the palms. So yeah, here is the first palm tree and yeah, it looks really beachy, but I thought it would fit well with the sand. And I'm actually going to do a second tree right behind. So as we can't place down some plants directly on the sand, I'm going to add a bit of coarse dirt here and there for extra detail. And I'm also going to put some gravel and path blocks. I'll be using the leftover acacia leaves to make some bushes and of course I'm going to place a cauldron with water 
as well as a feeder with a small piece of chicken for the snakes to eat. For the walls, instead of using cobblestone, I'm going to mix a bit of gravel in with the stone. And once that was done, I went to capture a snake to release him in the pen. To decorate the outside of the enclosure, I added some acacia leaves here and there. And I also went to find a second snake. And I think I just ended up catching another snake. So not even the one I had been running after for like five minutes. So yeah, snake habitat, check. Next, let's do the couple of woolly rhinos I'd found a few days back. So the centerpiece of their enclosure will be two large dirt mountains covered in snow at the top. Once I was done with the dirt base, I went over to my snowman. Oh, and by the way, we're gonna call him Bob. <laughs> and I collected plenty of snowballs and turned them into snow blocks for the peaks of the mountains. I also terraformed the area all around for making the pathway later on. For the floor, I planted some large spruce trees to get a bit of podzol to spread. I thought that making the walls out of spruce would fit better with the color tones of the woolly rhino habitat. As they were super chill and friendly, I released both woolly rhinos and named them Frank and Nancy. As they were large animals, I shoveled down some of the grass blocks, a bit like I did in the elephant habitat. And then I planted a few spruce trees, making them a bit taller than usual so that they wouldn't accidentally create an escape route for Frank and Nancy. The woolly rhinoceros is an extinct species of rhinoceros that inhabited northern Eurasia during the Pleistocene era. The appearance of this species is known from cave paintings and several fossil specimens were found in Siberia. It is believed that a warming climate and not hunting probably killed them off 1400 years ago. Genetic mutations suggest that the rhinos were so adapted to living in cold conditions that they could not survive when the climate rapidly warmed up. To add a bit of color, I went to gather up some lavender and planted some around the place. I then spotted the wandering trader and I got so confused when I noticed he actually had a cow on a lead. I mean, when does that happen? <laughs> I've always seen him only with llamas, but yeah. That was the surprise of the day. So to finish off, I bone meal the grass a little bit and soon enough, the enclosure was all done. And I spotted Nancy relaxing in the shade of a spruce tree and that was really sweet. For adding extra details on the outer part of the wall, I added some spruce bushes. And the next day I continued working on the pathway. So soon enough, I had to repair my shovel and yeah, I used some diamonds because I was too lazy to go down to farm skeletons, yes. <laughs> that night I got some flashbacks from Bonnie and Clyde because I spotted Frank climbing out over the wall and Nancy was already outside. So I quickly caught them again and bought them back in. And basically the reason was I'd forgotten to remove some leaves that were near the wall. With the melodies of my way and my baby shot me down, I started working on a new habitat near the giraffes. I used some spruce for the walls to contrast with the stone from the snow leopards and the oak fence from the giraffes. I had to do quite a bit of terraforming because it was on a hillside and I actually decided to keep part of the hill to make a sort of little cave to shelter the animals. On day 77, I added some reeds as well as a cauldron with water. To make the enclosure less flat, I also added a few small dirt piles and I also spotted this really cute tarantula. Yes, you heard me correctly. She looks super cute just walking around the place with her fat little legs. As usual, I bone mealed everywhere and then I set out in the savanna to find some animals. I came across these really cute African wild dogs. So I got three for the enclosure and I also collected some of these small bushes because I thought they would look nice in the enclosure as well. I welcomed the three guys to the zoo and named them Isaac, Taylor and Zach. For food, I gave them some rotten flesh, so I really hope they don't mind too much. Once the interior of the habitat was done, I added some spruce blocks on the outside wall, as well as acacia leaves. At that point, the zoo was finally looking like a proper zoo, and it was quite exciting because in the beginning, I was wondering if this was going anywhere. Once I was done with the African wild dogs, 
I started working on the reindeer enclosure because I kind of had forgotten about them. Whoopsie. I traced the outline out of spruce planks and on day 80 I went to collect some lavender as well as some purple leaves and saplings from the forest nearby. I grew some of these purple trees and then I used the leaves to decorate the outside and honestly they really looked awesome. They kind of gave like a mystical feel which I thought was really nice. I also dug up the hillside to leave a bit of space for the path. On day 81, I went to see Bob the snowman to get some extra snow and when I returned to the enclosure there was this random bison just chilling even though he wasn't really supposed to be there. I then placed down some snow sheets everywhere to give a frosty effect to the ground and I added some lavender in the gaps. Last but not least I shoveled down the remaining grass a bit and then it was time to release the deers. So the white one is Rudolph and the gray one is Nico. I kindly escorted Mr. Bison out and then I started working on the bear area. I used a mix of stone and gravel for the walls and then I had to go collect a bunch more stone throughout the night. I actually found some more diamonds but at that point I really couldn't care less because I already had so many. But to be fair, that is actually a good thing, you know, having so many diamonds that you don't really care to get some more. On day 83, I was working on the bare walls and I got surprised by this creeper, but thankfully he didn't blow up anything and all was good. When I think of bears, I imagine them snoozing in their caves, so I built a stone cave in the center. I flattened out the grass inside to make it comfy for the bears, and then I added some gravel as well as finishing touches on the wall. I thought it would be nice to have a bit of podzol, so I grew a 4x4 spruce tree as well. On day 84, I realized that Mr. Bison was in the bear enclosure, so I brought him over to live with Fred and George as he clearly enjoyed living inside the zoo. I added a few spruce trees and the zoo was now prepared to welcome two new occupants. So first I set out to find the brown bear I had spotted earlier on in the video and was able to capture him super easily because he wasn't aggressive at all. So yeah, it's a bit confusing. Sometimes the animals are aggressive, sometimes they aren't. Yeah. <laughs> I then flew over to the redwood forest to finally offer some help to the poor black bear that had spent so many days stuck on the top of a tree. So what I did is I placed a bunch of cage traps all around until he finally set one off. As I was in the redwood forest I thought I might as well pick up you know a bunch more ferns and then I headed back to the zoo to welcome the bears to their new home. I was peacefully planting some ferns when this creeper just popped up out of nowhere and I guess I decided to hug a tree. Yeah well done Tootsie and no panicking right here. <laughs> So yeah, as you might have guessed, I did have to fill in a hole in the bear enclosure. Once the coast was clear and I'd planted loads of ferns, I released the brown bear from the cage trap and he wandered about his enclosure. And it was really cool because at some point he just like walked on top of the cave and he really looked super majestic. So obviously I had to name him Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I set up a feeder and then I released the black bear that I named Snowflake. I crafted some extra item frames and then I went to kill some salmon to place them in the bear feeder. That night I went back down to mine for stone and I also found like this random light blue ore. I already had plenty, who cares? Okay, so please don't judge too hard, but yes, I did not pay attention to food in this video. I was just focused on animals, animals, animals as usual. So yeah, I guess I ran out of food. So I flew over to the village and I collected all the wheat they had so that I could make bread. When I came back, I realized it was time to start building the outer wall of the actual zoo so that I would have a clear separation between the zoo and the plains biome. From now on, I wouldn't be wasting any nights by sleeping or doing nothing because I needed the spare stone for the zoo. On day 87, I started working on the wall going around the entire zoo. And in the afternoon, I traced the outline for making, you know, the aquatic animal habitat, even though I knew I would probably never catch one. On days 88 to 89, I continued working on the new pen. So I filled it up with water 
and I actually used the river that was already there to my advantage because it made filling the area up so much quicker. I went back to the frozen ocean to try and catch an orca or a shark, but of course I couldn't find any that would be easy to catch, so I ended up just catching some poor penguins that I'd been peacefully living their lives before I came along. The next morning I worked a bit on the path next to the large pond and then I noticed a black bear walking about and suddenly I realized it was probably Snowflake that I'd gotten out of his enclosure. So I caught him in a trap to be able to bring him back to his enclosure. I released all the penguins in their new habitat and then I went to drop off Mr. Snowflake back to his habitat. Finally, it was time to repay my debt to the lions, so I started working on their enclosure. I used some sugarcane to decorate the side of the lake, and then I planted plenty of acacia trees as well as eucalyptus bushes and leaves. In the afternoon, it started raining and loads of mobs spawned, so I had to be really careful not to let a creeper explode and just ruin all my decorations. On day 93, I randomly got attacked by a leech. I mean, I don't know why, but they just give you a sudden jump scare. So <laughs> yeah, it's a bit annoying. I then flew over to the savannah to get some lions. So they were pretty easy to catch because they wanted to eat me. <laughs> so they would walk straight into the traps. I also decided to get my anteater buddy that loves giving hugs <laughs> because why not? But I didn't have an enclosure for him yet. So now let's have a few quick facts on lions. So lionesses are the primary hunters of the pride. This is because they are smaller and more agile than the males and they use teamwork to bring an animal down. But you shouldn't think that males don't do anything though. The males actually protect both the pride and the pride's territory from competing prides and other predators. I released the lions in the enclosure and yeah, they weren't as friendly as the other predators I'd bought back. But yeah, I expect they were just a bit hungry and anyway, I had my elytra, so yeah, it wasn't a big deal. After that, I wanted to build a jungle style habitat, so I set to work terraforming the area and yeah, I got poisoned by a spider again because they are so tiny, I never see them. I collected some extra stone for building and after admiring the zoo a bit, I set out to find some jungle animals. It was really handy to have the elytra because I arrived super quickly at the jungle biome. So I spotted some orcas and yet again, I wanted to try and catch one. So I placed down some traps in the ocean, but of course all I got was this random fish. <laughs> so yeah, I wasn't very successful once again. I collected some plants in a nearby swamp as well as some mud for decorating. In the afternoon, I spotted a leopard in the bushes as well as a group of small monkeys. So I captured a few to bring back. I also chopped down some jungle trees to get saplings and then I flew off to find some more animals. I managed to find some really cool looking mandrills and of course I got bit by a spider once again, <laughs> but yeah, no big deal. And then I let the mandrills walk inside the cage traps and headed home. When I got back to the zoo, I continued working on the jungle habitat. So as this is really boring, let's have a few facts on mandrills. The male mandrill is the largest living monkey and they only live in the rainforest of equatorial Africa. By the way, they are probably one of the most colorful animals in the world, as you can see right here. The next day I started planting some jungle trees to get extra saplings and I also decided to make a small pond on one side so I dug up the ground and I placed down some mud. To add a bit of color I placed down a bunch of flowers and I also bone mealed the ground to get loads of grass. In the evening, I was finishing off the wall and this random creeper blew up behind me. So I realized it was probably bedtime. So of course the next morning, first thing I had to do was block up the creeper hole. And then I went to add some water in the pond as well as some purple flowers. Finally, the enclosure was done and it was time to release all the monkeys. And I actually decided to release Mr. Johnny, the hugging anteater as well. So yeah, here is the jungle 
jungle habitat all done. I then suddenly remembered about the white pigeon I'd met on the very first day. So I went to see him and he followed me back home, but gradually on the way, two peacocks and a magpie came as well. So yeah, I had the entire bird gang with me. On the morning of day 99, I went to say hello to Fred and George and I picked up Jon Snow, who had clearly attempted to become a bison. I actually wanted to have another go at catching a marine animal, so back to the ocean I went for the millionth time, and guess what? I spotted a red octopus again. So I struggled for a bit, and finally I managed to catch him, so I was really happy, and I brought him over to live with the penguins. That night, Jon Snow insisted on becoming an elephant, so do you know what? I let him follow his life dream. I also wanted to have a look at the zoo, so I piled up above the dirt hut, and yeah, here is what it looks like, and honestly, it's looking pretty nice. We have finally made it to day 100. I decided to build an enclosure for the peacocks as they were flightless birds, so I set to work terraforming, I planted a dark oak tree in the center, I decorated with flowers and bushes before releasing the couple. The white pigeon had flown into the nether portal, so we said goodbye once again as he headed out on his very own adventure probably a 100 days as a white pigeon. We are finally done with the zoo, so here is a little walkthrough, and I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys, so don't forget to tell me what you thought about it in the comments down below, and also, if you'd like to see more content like this, you can leave a like and subscribe. I guess I will see you in the next video. Love you!